as we head into the month of June, time for an update again with the mayor of New Hope, Kathy Hempkin. Welcome, Kathy. How are you today? Hi, Dave. Just fine, thank you. It we was an exciting. It was an exciting weekend. It and was I'm indeed. It, I'm glad it's over. I yes. have to take a moment to thank our police officers and our fire department. Those guys were on standby all weekend, and they were working up till two, three, four in the morning, and we let them sleep in a little bit the next day. They they did a fantastic job. As far as I know, there were no incidents in New Hope, uh, no no uh, stealing, robbing. It just everything seemed to go just fine. So that's the way we want it. So glad to hear that. And I know you have a declaration that was given by the city that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Let's talk about some of the things that are going on with June now here. What has changed at City Hall? Tell us a little bit about the operation there. Well, we're trying to do a soft opening at City Hall, effective today, June 1st. Uh, what that means is we're trying to get the employees back in, get them used to wearing the masks around the City Hall. Uh, they've been working from home for the last month, and it's time to get them back. Uh, there are plexiglass plates, temporary ones that are put up, and the permanent ones will be up probably this week sometime. We are asking people, if they have business with the city, to please do it virtually like they've been doing. If they really need to come in, uh, they'll be asked to wear a mask, and uh, somebody will come out and actually talk to them probably in the hallway rather than letting them into the, the, the internal part of City Hall. And that website, again, newhopemn.gov. So, again, a lot of things you can do with the city online. Let's talk about the Hennepin Recycling Group, something that people always look forward to in spring. Did not happen, but we have good news for people. It is going to happen. Tell us when Me and where. Me too. Well, it was supposed to be April 25th, and of course they canceled that. So it's in Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, I'm sorry. And uh, it's October 10th, and all that bulky stuff you want to bring in to them, they'll take that. So that is the special materials drop off. And I believe it is in Brooklyn Park up off of 85th and Noble, I think is where that Brooklyn yes. Park maintenance facility is. So go to yep. the city's website to find out more about the specific date and some of the costs for some of the items that you might be bringing. Let's move ahead to community development. Outdoor dining has been a big talk here. Tell us about how that's being handled in New Hope. Well, you know, our, our restaurants have really been suffering. And we want them to get back into business if they can. So we passed a temporary ordinance that they could have outdoor dining. Some of this outdoor dining is going to be on sidewalks. Some of it's going to be in the parking lots blocked off. Uh, some of them have patios. They'll have to apply for the ordinance to uh, be able to do that just so that we know they're complying. Uh, there won't be a fee for that. We, we're just trying to get them back, back in business. You can still order your food and pick it up just like you always have, but if you're just really wanting to sit down and talk to somebody outdoors, this is a great week to do that. Very good. Best of luck to all of those restaurants. Let's give people an update on the tobacco use prevention campaign. What are some of the new information there and some dates people to need to know? Well, we did actually pass that tobacco ordinance. It's effective July 1st. You have to buy... We're selling it, are having a hard time getting people uh, to work there. And they have a lot of younger 18-year-olds, so that's why that is. The flavored products are pretty much banned except for mint, menthol, and wintergreen. Um, and the other thing that's happening is any place that has a pharmacy on premises won't be allowed to sell tobacco after the end of the year. So that will be at the grocery store at Hy-Vee but they will be able to sell it in the convenience store. that will also be Walgreens that won't be able to sell tobacco products. Very good. Let's move ahead to scattered site housing. We've been following some of the developments in the city and one on Utah. You have some very good news about this site. I do. We, we bought that house, uh, hired somebody, renovated the inside, and uh, we have a buyer for 387 So the EDA is going to contemplate that in the middle of the month, and if that passes with the EDA, then and we'll go ahead and close on that house. One of our biggest areas to update residents on today is park and recreation. We have a full laundry list of items here. Let's just start in general about park and rec. What is happening? What do people need to know there? Well, a lot of the classes, summer classes, are being done virtually. They're doing some one-on-one -on -one virtual classes. They're doing some group classes. You really need to go online. There's just too many to, to mention at the moment. So go online, uh, it'll all be happening, but it'll be happening virtually. 
the dance coordinator is trying to figure out a way to have dance classes with some social distancing. I'm sure there'll be uh, more classes with less kids in them, but the kids really want to get back to that. The ice arena is, um, they, they kept that ice in and now it turns out that was a good decision. They're open now as of the 1st of June for some very limited skating call or go online and find out when you can go in. They're trying to get the uh, uh, the leagues, the ice leagues going again. Okay. They'll be doing fall and winter scheduling as usual. And again, go online and, and schedule your fall and winter ice time. Let's talk about other facilities throughout the city, other athletic facilities. What is the update there? And what is the possibility of some of those leagues maybe at ball fields going this summer? Well, we, we've got a lot of athletic fields, and we really want those teams to get back on those athletic fields, but we want them to get back safely, of course. So we're looking at trying to get the Adult Softball League back started in July. Uh, that looks pretty good. The youth sports, uh, depending on, on how, that, the, how the ordinance reads and what we can do to keep everybody safe and sanitized. And let's talk about the golf course, if we could, for a minute, just to give people an update there. Things seem to be rolling along smoothly and some more opportunities available there. Tell us about that. Well, they told me yesterday that that was the biggest May they've had in years. The number of rounds was just phenomenal. And the thing that's really interesting is a lot of young people, uh, young adults and young families with children are out there playing. And, of course, the leagues are still going on. They open up the patio now, and you can sit out in the patio uh, right off of the ninth hole. However, it's a little sunny out there, so if you want to sit in a shady spot, you can go around the back and sit back there. They, they've got the tables moved apart, so you can sit back there where it's cooler. They're going to start being able to sell alcohol as of the first. So come on out to the golf course if no, for no other reason just to sit with your friends on the, bel on the patio or the balcony. Very good idea. And we've mentioned the pool and some of our updates again. Unfortunately, the pool will not open this year, but work continues on. Tell us about that schedule and what we're seeing in the last week or so as far as construction. Well, the 50-meter pool, of course, is in and ready to go, but not going. We can't get lifeguards because they can't certify through the American Heart Association. But we're trying, or the American Red Cross. Uh, they're pouring the, the uh, foundation for the vortex pool in the, in the current channel, and they're landscaping. The bathhouse is ready. The, just about everything is ready to go. They're landscaping City Hall now and putting in trees. We're ready to go. We just can't. But it is quite the sight if you do drive by. I drove by the other day just to take a look for a couple of minutes, and again, it is very impressive. And it is amazing how big that area looks to what you thought before was the size of that area behind the old city hall. It is. I understand there's, they're going to try to do movies in the, in the theater area. Uh, they've got the, they don't want that grass to get trampled down, so they're not doing the, the play this year again. Uh, but they, they're trying to get some movies in the park started there, and of course the picnic shelter is open too. Very good. And final moment, we would just want to spend a second here to talk about a statement that came out from the city again with all that went on over this past weekend. Uh, announcement came from the city. Kathy, if you can read that for us. I will. Last week, the life of George Floyd was taken only miles from our community. The city of New Hope extends its deepest condolences to Mr. Floyd's family and those closest to him, as well as everyone who is feeling the grief, anger, and frustration caused by this tragedy. One of the most beautiful things about our community is its diversity. We recognize the value of our differences while working to create and maintain an environment of inclusion and acceptance. However, we understand there is still a long way to go. We are committed to taking that path together as one community. We want all residents of New Hope to feel safe, to feel seen, and to feel heard. New Hope Police Department regularly attends trainings and has discussions about race and equality. We recognize the importance of having these conversations and participating in these trainings and will continue doing so moving forward. The New Hope City Council, New Hope Police Department, and New Hope City Administration are committed to our residents, our visitors, and business owners and are staying engaged, hearing your stories, listening to your concerns, and celebrating our successes as we walk this path together. And I, I must thank my citizens, they, or my residents, they have just been marvelous through this. This is a scary time for all of them, 
Um, the city staff, the city council, and the police department are here to help wherever we can. Mayor, thank you very much again for that statement and for your time today and the statement from the City of New Hope. We will keep people up to date of things that are happening. Again, go to the city's website, newhopemn.gov, for the latest updates. Mayor Hempkin, thanks again for your time, and we hope to talk to you again next week. Thank you, Dave. Learn more about the connection at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.